welcome back. I'm Ariel for those of you new to my channel. And here we talk about all things yoga and wellness. Uh, today, we're gonna do an asana lab on forward bending. I'm excited to talk about this particular family of poses because I actually had an injury from forward bending. I tore or pulled the top of my hamstring. And that's because at first I was not doing them in a way that protected and strengthened what part of the hamstring need to be strengthened. So I want to teach these poses to you in a way that will help you feel confident, safe, and increase your stretch over time. Also, we'll go over some ways to modify for those of you who are a little less flexible in the hamstrings, again, so you can take care of your knees and stuff like that. So let's dive right in. For forward bending, the most important thing is to make sure that you're not leaning into where the hamstring inserts and attaches. So your hamstring has an attachment right onto those bony bones in the butt, and their official name is the ischial tuberosities, but sometimes we call them the sits bones. So they're just right here. And your hamstring is really vulnerable wherever it inserts and attaches, it thins out, and also in the back of the knee there. So we wanna make sure we're not doing the stretch in those two spots, but in the belly of the muscle. So let's start with a standing forward bend. I'm going to start with a block between my legs so that I'm really feeling uh, that effort of squeezing the block. Feet are parallel and toes are ever so slightly turned in and lift and spread the toes. So you find a really good anchor, squeeze the block, roll the quads out and press the shins in. And you'll feel right at the bottom of the glute there where the hamstring is, you'll feel that engage, which is really great. So there's no risk of overstretching or tearing the hamstring here. Now, if I were to let that go and then lean back and hinge, you can see that I'm putting a lot of stress where that hamstring attaches. So by using the block, quads roll out, shins press in, and keeping some weight in the toes, meaning keeping the hips forward right over the ankles. Stack your joints here. Keep those joints stacked, lift the ribs off of the hips, and feel the belly empty as you come forward. Now you can just place your hands on your shins and find a flat back and keep your weight in your toes. The minute you lean back, back out of the pose. You can slide those hands down as long as you keep the weight in the toes and even hands can come to the earth or they can come to your other block. Important to keep the weight in the toes, squeeze the block, quads roll out, shins press in, spine long, and belly in. There is a fascial line from the base of the heel all the way to the base of the skull. It runs all the way up the back side of the body. So if you want to stretch the muscles in the backs of the legs, you need to press down through the heels and lengthen out through the whole spine. You can keep coming into that forward bend as long as you don't lean back into the heels. You may also do this with knees bent. The full variation of the pose is taking a yogi toe hold. So you hear about this in Ashtanga especially and this is just sliding your first two fingers under the big toe, thumbs rest on top, lengthen your spine, keep the weight in the toes, elbows flare out wide, and then you can fold. Okay. Now, if you're doing what is called a 
seated forward bend. Similar, but different. The first step in a seated forward bend is to make sure that your tailbone's not rolling underneath you. Because if the tailbone's rolling underneath you, when you come to the forward bend, you'll be rounding in the spine. So you want to actually work your booty out from underneath you so that spine can get long. Now, if you find you're still rounding, I suggest sitting on a cushion or a bolster. The only thing about this is that now you might hyperextend in the knees. So in that case, take a towel or a folded blanket, give it a little roll, and slide it underneath your knees so they have some support. Yeah. And then go ahead and lift the spine. Again, we want to flex the feet to activate the top of the hamstring. And we want to come down just as long as our spine is long. Pause. And then come down a little more. Pause. Use your breath here. Inhale, lengthen. And this is where your Uddiyana Bhatna comes in. You actually have to make room for the forward bend. So you pull the belly in and then fold. Inhale, lengthen. And fold. You can always find your yogi toe hold here. First two fingers around the big toe. Thumbs rest in the front and fold. Okay, you may also use a strap in this forward bend around your feet and just hold on to it. Press through the big toe and the toe pad and then fold. Those of you who are a little more flexible here, you can also use a block and hold on to the block. And if you don't need the bolster, really make sure that the spine is long and the feet are flexed. And you have a sense of that block between the legs. Squeeze and then fold. Now this principle applies to all forward bends. Sometimes you'll get a wide angle forward bend. Right? When you're like this, same principle. Flex the feet, knees face the sky, and lengthen the spine. And the same standing. Right? Your wide angle forward bend standing, turn the toes in slightly. Don't let your weight fall into your heels, lift and really lift through the quads and come forward so that we're not stressing the top of the hamstring. Right? No leaning back in the heels. I hope this is helpful for you. If you go through those steps, you can increase your flexibility over time without putting your hamstrings at risk for injury. I will see you next time on the mat for our next Asana Lab. Have a wonderful day. Namaste. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and to click the subscribe button to stay informed of new content. Write in the comments below what pose you would like me to cover in the next Asana Lab.